All right, so I just bought a new microphone and it finally came. So I was excited to, to try it out and see if it makes my video sound a little bit better. Um, and we don't really have anything else left to go over this week, but I thought I'd just make a video going over one or two more examples of using the quotient rule. Okay, and so we'll use these on functions that are pretty important in biology called Hill functions. Right, and these are basically these saturating looking functions that are used to model things like uh, ion channels in different cells opening up and then saturating at some number of open channels or, you know, some sort of concentration of some sort of enzyme that then is going to saturate at some level. So anything where you have saturation and opening and closing type things in biology, people turn to the Hill model um, to model that process, right? And so the Hill function is just of the form x to the n over 1 plus x to the n, right? And sometimes they'll change this constant here and they'll assign this power and that kind of determines how steeply this thing saturates, okay? And so depending on your process, you want to fit this to the data that you have about that process. Okay, so we'll do two examples of this. So our first one will be n equals 1, right? So this function looks like x to the n over 1 plus x to the n. Sorry, x to the 1. So just x over 1 plus x. All right, so if we want to know, okay, what is this function doing? Right? What is the derivative of this function that gives us some information about what's going on? So if we do the derivative of this, we have to apply the quotient rule, right? So recall that that is derivative of the top times the bottom, right? So low d high, right? So then derivative of the top is one. Right? So maybe I'll write this out one more step over here, right? So this is like g of x over h, where g of x is x and h of x is one plus x, right? So then g prime of x would be one and h prime of x would be also one, right? They have the same derivative actually in this case. But we'll do this in our uh, quotient rule formulation, right? So we have f prime of x is equal to low d high, so h times g prime minus high d low, so g times h prime, square the bottom and away we go. So then h of x squared, right? So plugging in all these functions and their derivatives that we have up there, that gives us one plus x times one minus x times one all over one plus x squared. Okay, then we'll simplify this a bit. Right, this gives us 1 plus x minus x, so that just gives us 1 over 1 plus x squared. Sorry, 1 plus x squared. And one thing to note is that this derivative is always positive, right? So this function is always increasing, and it never really goes, it never like reaches a maximum or goes back down. It's just always increasing for all x, right? No matter what, uh, it'll be an increasing function of x. So f of x is always increasing, which makes sense because this is kind of what we're, what we're modeling, is we're modeling some saturating process that's always increasing up to the saturation point, but never really gets there. Okay, and I'll just move this one. This is not our function. But here is our function, right? This is our f of x is equal to x over 1 plus x, this hill function with n equals 1, right? And so you can see, you know, usually think about these, uh, you ignore the negatives when you're modeling something with this sort of function. But really it's going from 0 up to 1, and it's going to take a long time to get there, right? This is like 10 over here, and it's still not at 1 yet. So it's just going to increase all the way up to 1, but it's never going to get there, right? If you look at this function, right, x over 1 plus x, the bottom is always going to be bigger than the top, right? And it'll approach one, but it will never really get there. So it's always increasing up to one, okay? And so because it's always increasing, right, f prime of x is positive since f of x is always increasing up to one. Up to 
one. Right. And you know, other stuff happens for, for negative X values, but, but we'll ignore that for now. I just wanted to talk about it on this positive domain. Okay. So the next example that we'll do is the, I guess I'll just leave the graph here. Right. The next example is F of X equals X squared over one plus X squared, right? So this is a different Hill function with N equals two, right? And so it's kind of a steeper um, slope at first, but then it, it gets to one faster, but it, it's, it's just a different type of saturation process than this one, which kind of slowly increases up to one. This one is a little bit sharper, right? But it still uh, will have the same sort of problems, right? So if we take this one, Right, let's apply the power, sorry, the quotient rule to this, right? So let's take the derivative, f prime of x, right? That's gonna be low, sorry, one plus x squared, d high, right? So the derivative of the top is two x, minus high, x squared, d low, derivative of the bottom is also two x, and then we square the bottom. So one plus x squared, squared. Okay, so let's simplify this out a little bit. This gives us 2x plus 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, all that over one plus x squared squared. Okay, so then this gives us 2x over one plus x squared squared. Squared's on the bottom. Okay, and so if you notice that over here on the left, uh, you can see a little bit of the negative domain, but again, we usually focus on these in the positive domain, right? So just for positive X values. So for positive X values, this is always increasing, right? F prime of X is positive or X positive, right? When X is positive, the top is positive, the bottom's always positive, okay? So F of X is always increasing for positive X. Right, for negative x, it's actually the opposite, right? For negative x, it'd always be decreasing away from that saturation point, since this is a perfectly symmetric function, but, but we're not really gonna think about that, okay? So this is just a little bit of practice on using the quotient rule for you know, some sort of functions that you might see in models later on in this class, all right?